Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. First off, I'd like to thank everybody who's been sharing out all of the videos and commenting and subscribing and all that good stuff. It really helps the channel. So in the last video where we looked at some malicious smart contracts, we deobfuscated some very, very simple code and we saw how it was working with the IPFS and pulling in some code. But the code itself was very, very simple and it was basically all comments and very easy to look through. So in this one, we're gonna look at a slightly more complicated example and we're going to graph some stuff out and look at some other techniques with some plugins and how to get a look at what's going on in a smart contract and then work through another simple example. So let's get started. So first off, I would love to make $1,200 a day with a front run bot and I'm sure you would too. So I searched how to make $1,200 a day on Uniswap from some other stuff I was seeing while I was searching. So if you click this, it's a guy again, and he's walking you through what looks like legitimate code, but all he really shows you is the legitimate liquidity pair addresses, and then tells you to fund the contract, use MetaMask with your real wallet, and then start it up. But what is it actually doing? And that's what we wanna find out. So let's hit show more. And we'll see here, we gotta download MetaMask because we gotta hook up our Ethereum wallet. We're gonna use Remix to deploy it, and then we're going to use this code. So if I click this code, we're gonna open it up here. Opens up a paste bin link, and we have some Solidity 0.6.6 .6 code. So what we wanna do is we're gonna grab this code and we wanna put it into Visual Studio Code, because then we can use some plugins, and we can also use syntax highlighting and all that good stuff and take a closer look. So let's do that, let's create a malicious 2.sol and let's paste this code in here. I'm gonna do a control V. Okay, cool. So I have all this code and we have like about 500 lines of code. And one thing you'll notice that's different between this code and the code in the last video is that there's actually legitimate code in here, right? So we have a function, we have some comments, but it's telling us what it's doing. We have parameters, we have our return, um, it's doing some for loops, right? These are actual legitimate functions with code in them. And we're not seeing a ton of comments like last time. So we actually have things we need to look through. We have withdraw functions, start functions, memory pool functions, some conversion functions like two hex digit. And we could go line by line in this and we probably should if we were doing an audit for a client. But we really just wanna know how this is functioning and figuring out how it flows and then we're gonna dial in on the actual functionality. Okay, in order to check the flow, let's actually install some plugins. You'll notice my face is gone, but that is because it stopped working with my camera, uh, the audio breaks. So we're just gonna move on anyway. So if we go to view extensions, and we wanna install something that allows us to graph, and that is this Solidity Visual Developer. We're gonna use that to check the code flow, but we're also going to utilize our remove comments from the last video, and we're gonna install remove empty lines. So once you install all of those, we are going to go back into our code, and what we wanna do is, in this malicious.soul, we're going to hit Control shift p and search for S-U-R-Y, and you'll see this graph this. Now if I hit this, it's going to start graphing this smart contract. So I'm going to minimize this so we have a little more screen real estate. And we'll open this up. Now if I hit my mouse wheel, I can scroll in and I can grab it by hitting the button um, on the left click and just moving around. So you'll notice that our internal calls have a green line, our external calls have a white line. And that's really it for the legend. Sometimes there's some more stuff up there. But as you go through, you'll start seeing a flow of things like we have our constructor, our receive ether, then we have some kind of function that is calling another function. And when I click that, it actually only highlights that code flow. I can reset everything by just hitting that. And if we scroll out, we see there is a function here that's doing a lot of stuff. So that's like the meat of the functionality within this application. So if I scroll in here, we have a call front run action mempool 
which is calling mempool, parse memory pool, some other mempool stuff, uh, checking the liquidity, running some hex to digit stuff. But you'll also notice that all of these are internal transactions. They're not actually reaching out anywhere. So is it actually reaching out to a mempool? Probably not. But we can trace that stuff in code if we wanted to and just kind of take a look at what's going on. So the name of this was, let's see, underscore call, and that would be this one right here, call front run action mempool. And that just returns an address, okay, interesting. Um, and it's going to return parse memory pool function, and that's calling the mempool function. So that kind of matches up with our graph over here, right? We have call action, call mempool, parse memory pool, and then it does a whole bunch of stuff. So if we were actually analyzing this for a client, we'd wanna understand what all of this functionality is doing and the flow of the application. Now, more interesting to us, since we have an idea that this might be malicious, are you know what kind of external calls is it making where there might be some shady stuff going on? And if we look at our legend up here again, that would be this white, right? And you'll also notice most of these are kind of this beige color and we have these two that stand out here, start and withdraw. They don't really define in the legend what this is doing, but it stands out a bit. And if you look at it, it's making an external call with this white line to Uniswap deposit address function within a manager contract and the withdraw is doing the same thing. So that's kind of odd that a start function and a withdraw function is calling the exact same function in another contract. So that's probably something we wanna look at here. So let's say control F, start. Let's take a look at what this is doing. So we have a function start. It's a payable function, so that's interesting. It can send and receive money. And it's saying manager, which is that contract Uniswap deposit address, which is that function that we saw in this graph. And then what is that doing? So that is transferring the balance of this contract to that address. Now, what is that address? Presumably it's probably not somewhere we wanna transfer money on a start function. The start function should obviously be calling the mempool functionality, checking the mempool, looking for um, you know gas fees that they can manipulate in order to front run transactions. It should not be just transferring money out of a contract. Maybe a withdrawal should be doing that and that looks like it's doing the exact same thing here. But again, this withdrawal is transferring the balance of the whole contract, which is a little bit odd. And so we should probably look at where this is coming from and where the code is. So we have that manager, so let's search for that and we'll say manager. And it looks like we are saying manager, manager. We're doing a manager equals new manager, okay. So that's gonna have to be coming from these imports up here. Now we have some library imports, which presumably are a real Uniswap um, actual import. And you might wanna look in this code how these uh, Uniswap like functions from these contracts being imported are used, if they even are being used. Um, I don't really see much from these actual graphs over here. And then we have a mempool router, which kind of stands out. It's not really the Uniswap um, GitHub, and it's also a raw GitHub user content. So let's take a look at what's actually in here. And we'll say copy. Open up the browser again, and we'll say Paste. Now, once we open up this, we'll see Pragma Solidity 0.6.6. .6. So maybe this is some more Solidity code. But then we see comments, comments, comments. Looks like BNB coin, Tether coin, USD coin, and we have addresses associated with those. Could actually be the real contract addresses. I don't know. We'd have to go to Etherscan to figure that out. But I'm not really seeing any other com, like content in here that's uncommented other than a solidity line. So maybe hidden in here is some other kind of code that gets run. So what we should do is we should copy paste all of this and we should put this into uh, Visual Studio Code and deobfuscate it, right? So if I copy that, let's actually put this into Visual Studio Code. So we'll hop in here and create a new file. 
and we'll say manager.soul. And let's paste this in here. And let's also close the other one because sometimes if you have other things open, the extensions you want to use will kind of mess up. So we only want this manager.soul open. Hit control S and we're going to hit control shift P. And we're going to say remove all comments. And it's saying cannot remove comments, unknown language solidity. So let's make it do what we want by changing it to something that it does know how to work with, which maybe might be a JavaScript. So we'll say JS. Let's run that again and see if it runs with JS files. Say remove all comments. And let's wait a minute. All right, that is finished. We have a bunch of empty lines. And let's now get rid of those empty lines and clean this up a bit more. So let's say remove all empty lines. And that should be something that you installed. You can just search for it up here, remove, and it should pop up here, all empty lines. So we'll do that. And we go from thousands of lines to nine lines of code. And if you look at this, it looks like an actual contract, right? We had that Pragma Solidity line we saw running 0.6.6, .6, which is the same as our other contract. The contract name is manager, so that you know meets with our graphs. And our Uniswap deposit address, we also saw within our code and our graph. And this is returning an address. This is presumably the attacker address where everything's getting sent from our contract when we liquidate it with the this balance. So let's copy this and take a look on Etherscan and see what we see. So we'll go to Etherscan, we'll type this in, and we'll hit enter. And it looks like there is 0.14 Ether in here at $237. We can look at where it came from. It happened about an hour and 16 minutes ago. Now, earlier when I looked at this, there was about $20,000 worth of Ether in here. So it looks like there's something automated withdrawing out of here on intervals that is taking the money out before it gets frozen or something else happens to it, right? So we could do a little more forensics on here if we wanted to see what was going on there or monitor it and subscribe to it and see what's going on. But let's actually deploy this in Remix the way they want us to. So if you watch that video, what they had us do was they had us put the code into Remix. And once we did that, they wanted us to compile it. So we want to go to the compiler and we want to make sure that the compiler 0.6.6 .6 matches our code up here. If it's anything else, like say 0.8, the newest, that would be bad and it probably won't compile, but it's 0.6.6. .6. We can change it by just doing the dropdown if we needed to. Uh, once we compile that, we get a check mark saying it's okay and we want to deploy that. If we hit deploy, it says contract is abstract. Now, that's probably because there's a lot of different contracts happening in here that are being imported. We want to make sure we grab the one we created, which was malicious.soul uh, right here. And then once we do that, we can actually deploy that. Once deployed, you're going to see the contract here and we see all the functionality. Now, the only actual functions here are start and withdraw. Then we have a token name and a token symbol you can get information from. But these are the only two functionalities. And if you remember, the only things these were doing were liquidating the contract. So if we do what they want us to do in the video, if you watched it, which was go to injected web three provider, which would be our MetaMask on the Ethereum mainnet, take this contract address and send actual funds to it from our MetaMask. Then as soon as we hit start, it's going to take all the money we sent in and it's going to send it to the attacker. So that's the scam here. Right? We have a bunch of code that looks more legitimate than last time. It's not just commented out code. It's doing a lot of stuff, mostly useless things. But then it imports the functionality which grabs the address from the attacker, this time from a GitHub user content link instead of an IPFS link. A little bit different. Might throw you for a loop this time because the code looked more legitimate. But then that code, after we deobfuscated it, is sending it to the attacker. So. This video showed you a couple things. To recap, it showed you how to use plugins with graphing. Now you can apply this graphing to other things like CTFs or client code where you have a lot of things going on and you wanna see the flow and find out where the juicy bits are of code. 
and really dial in and you can see how everything interacts. Here we just used it to see, okay, where the external calls were and where like the main functionality presumably is. So apply that to other projects. We also used another plugin that removed the lines after we removed the comments to help us clean up and deobfuscate the code. Now, this is just another simple process of how we analyze malicious smart contracts that are kind of like, you know, uh, malicious code that you'd have on a desktop except on a smart contract and they're using social engineering to get you to actually run it. Hopefully this was useful, added a couple new tools to your toolbox. If it did, like, subscribe, and please share out this content to all of your friends. Catch you in the next one.